Karl Theodor Jaspers, German, K.L. Jasps, the 23rd of February 1883 to the 26th of February 1969, was a German-Swiss psychiatrist and philosopher who had a strong influence on modern theology, psychiatry, and philosophy. After being trained in and practicing psychiatry, Jaspers turned to philosophical inquiry and attempted to discover an innovative philosophical system. He was often viewed as a major exponent of existentialism in Germany, though he did not accept the label. Biography Jaspers was born in Oldenburg in 1883 to a mother from a local farming community, and a jurist father. He showed an early interest in philosophy, but his father's experience with the legal system undoubtedly influenced his decision to study law at University of Heidelberg. It soon became clear that Jaspers did not particularly enjoy law, and he switched to studying medicine in 1902 with a thesis about criminology. In 1910 he married Gertrude Mayer 1879 the sister of his close friends Gustav Mayer and Ernst Mayer. Jaspers earned his medical doctorate from University of Heidelberg Medical School in 1908 and began work at a psychiatric hospital in Heidelberg under Franz Nissel, successor of Emil Kraepelin and Karl Bonhoeffer, and Karl Wilmans. Jaspers became dissatisfied with the way the medical community of the time approached the study of mental illness and gave himself the task of improving the psychiatric approach. In 1913 Jaspers habilitated at the philosophical faculty of the Heidelberg University and gained there in 1914 a post as a psychology teacher. The post later became a permanent philosophical one, and Jaspers never returned to clinical practice. During this time Jaspers was a close friend of the Weber family Max Weber also having held a professorship at Heidelberg. In 1921, at the age of 38, Jaspers turned from psychology to philosophy, expanding on themes he had developed in his psychiatric works. He became a philosopher, in Germany and Europe. After the Nazi seizure of power in 1933, Jaspers was considered to have a Jewish taint. Judisch Versapung, in the jargon of the time, due to his Jewish wife, and was forced to retire from teaching in 1937. In 1938 he fell under a publication ban as well. Many of his longtime friends stood by him, however, and he was able to continue his studies and research without being totally isolated. But he and his wife were under constant threat of removal to a concentration camp until 30 March 1945, when Heidelberg was liberated by American troops. In 1948, Jaspers moved to the University of Basel in Switzerland. He remained prominent in the philosophical community and became a naturalized citizen of Switzerland living in Basel until his death on his wife's 90th birthday in 1969. Contributions to psychiatry Jasper's dissatisfaction with the popular understanding of mental illness led him to question both the diagnostic criteria and the methods of clinical psychiatry. He published a paper in 1910 in which he addressed the problem of whether paranoia was an aspect of personality or the result of biological changes. Although it did not broach new ideas, this article introduced a rather unusual method of study, at least according to the norms then prevalent. Not unlike Freud, Jaspers studied patients in detail, giving biographical information about the patients as well as notes on how the patients themselves felt about their symptoms. This has become known as the biographical method and now forms a mainstay of psychiatric and above all psychotherapeutic practice. Jaspers set down his views on mental illness in a book which he published in 1913, General Psychopathology. This work has become a classic in the psychiatric literature and many modern diagnostic criteria stem from ideas found within it. One of Jaspers' central tenets was that psychiatrists should diagnose symptoms of mental illness particularly of psychosis by their form rather than by their content. For example, in diagnosing a hallucination, it is more important to note that a person experiences visual phenomena when no sensory stimuli account for them, than to note what the patient sees. What the patient sees is the content, but the discrepancy between visual perception and objective reality is the form. Jaspers thought that psychiatrists could diagnose delusions in the same way. He argued that clinicians should not consider a belief delusional based on the content of the belief, but only based on the way in which a patient holds such a belief. See delusion for further discussion. Jaspers also distinguished between primary and secondary delusions. 
He defined primary delusions as autochthonous, meaning that they arise without apparent cause, appearing incomprehensible in terms of a normal mental process. This is a slightly different use of the word autochthonous than the ordinary medical or sociological use as a synonym for indigenous. Secondary delusions, on the other hand, he defined as those influenced by the person's background, current situation, or mental state. Jaspers considered primary delusions to be ultimately ununderstandable since he believed no coherent reasoning process existed behind their formation. This view has caused some controversy, and the likes of R. D. Lawing and Richard Bentall 1999, p. 133-135 have criticized it, stressing that this stance can lead therapists into the complacency of assuming that because they do not understand a patient, the patient is deluded and further investigation on the part of the therapist will have no effect. For instance Huab Engels 2009 argues that schizophrenic speech disorder may be understandable, just as Emil Kraepelin's dream speech is understandable. Topic. Contributions to philosophy and theology Most commentators associate Jaspers with the philosophy of existentialism, in part because he draws largely upon the existentialist roots of Nietzsche and Kierkegaard, and in part because the theme of individual freedom permeates his work. In Philosophy 3 Vols, 1932, Jaspers gave his view of the history of philosophy and introduced his major themes. Beginning with modern science and empiricism, Jaspers points out that as we question reality, we confront borders that an empirical or scientific method simply cannot transcend. At this point, the individual faces a choice, sink into despair and resignation, or take a leap of faith toward what Jaspers calls transcendence. In making this leap, individuals confront their own limitless freedom, which Jaspers calls existence, and can finally experience authentic existence. Transcendence, paired with the term the encompassing in later works, is, for Jaspers, that which exists beyond the world of time and space. Jaspers' formulation of transcendence as ultimate non objectivity or no -ness has led many philosophers to argue that ultimately, Jaspers became a monist. Though Jaspers himself continually stressed the necessity of recognizing the validity of the concepts both of subjectivity and of objectivity, although he rejected explicit religious doctrines, including the notion of a personal God, Jaspers influenced contemporary theology through his philosophy of transcendence and the limits of human experience. Mystic Christian traditions influenced Jaspers himself tremendously, particularly those of Meister Eckhart and of Nicholas of Cusa. He also took an active interest in Eastern philosophies, particularly Buddhism, and developed the theory of an axial age, a period of substantial philosophical and religious development. Jaspers also entered public debates with Rudolf Bultmann, wherein Jaspers roundly criticized Bultmann's demythologizing of Christianity, see Myth and Christianity, an inquiry into the possibility of religion without myth, a debate between Jaspers and Bultmann, the Noonday Press, New York, 1958 Jaspers wrote extensively on the threat to human freedom posed by modern science and modern economic and political institutions. During World War II, he had to abandon his teaching post because his wife was Jewish. After the war he resumed his teaching position, and in his work The Question of German Guilt he unabashedly examined the culpability of Germany as a whole in the atrocities of Hitler's Third Reich. The following quote about the Second World War and its atrocities was used at the end of the sixth episode of the BBC documentary series The Nazis, a warning from history. That which has happened is a warning. To forget it is guilt. It must be continually remembered. It was possible for this to happen, and it remains possible for it to happen again at any minute. Only in knowledge can it be prevented." Jasper's major works, lengthy and detailed, can seem daunting in their complexity. His last great attempt at a systematic philosophy of existence—von der Wahrheit on truth—has not yet appeared in English. However, he also wrote shorter works, most notably, Philosophy is for Everyman. The two major proponents of phenomenological hermeneutics, namely Paul Ricoeur a student of Jaspers and Hans-Georg Gadamer Jaspers' successor at Heidelberg, both display Jaspers' influence in their works. Topic. Political views Jaspers identified with the liberal political philosophy of Max Weber, although he rejected Weber's nationalism. He valued humanism and cosmopolitanism and, influenced by Immanuel Kant, advocated an international federation of states with shared constitutions, laws, and international courts. 
He strongly opposed totalitarian despotism and warned about the increasing tendency towards technocracy, or a regime that regards humans as mere instruments of science or of ideological goals. He was also skeptical of majoritarian democracy. Thus, he supported a form of governance that guaranteed individual freedom and limited government, and shared Weber's belief that democracy needed to be guided by an intellectual elite. Topic. Influences Jaspers held Kierkegaard and Nietzsche to be two of the most important figures in post-Kantian philosophy. In his compilation, The Great Philosophers Die Grown Philosophen, he wrote, I approach the presentation of Kierkegaard with some trepidation. Next to Nietzsche, or rather, prior to Nietzsche, I consider him to be the most important thinker of our post-Kantian age. With Goethe and Hegel, an epoch had reached its conclusion, and our prevalent way of thinking, that is, the positivistic, natural scientific one, cannot really be considered as philosophy." Jaspers also questions whether the two philosophers could be taught. For Kierkegaard, at least, Jaspers felt that Kierkegaard's whole method of indirect communication precludes any attempts to properly expound his thought into any sort of systematic teaching. Though Jaspers was certainly indebted to Kierkegaard and Nietzsche, he also owes much to more traditional philosophers, especially Kant and Plato. Walter Kaufman argues in From Shakespeare to Existentialism that, though Jaspers was certainly indebted to Kierkegaard and Nietzsche, he was closest to Kant's philosophy. Jaspers is too often seen as the heir of Nietzsche and Kierkegaard to whom he is in many ways less close than to Kant. The Kantian antinomies and Kant's concern with the realm of decision, freedom, and faith have become exemplary for Jaspers. And even as Kant had to do away with knowledge to make room for faith, Jaspers values Nietzsche in large measure because he thinks that Nietzsche did away with knowledge, thus making room for Jaspers' philosophic faith. This is supported by Jaspers' essay, On My Philosophy. While I was still at school Spinoza was the first. Kant then became the philosopher for me and has remained so. Nietzsche gained importance for me only late as the magnificent revelation of nihilism and the task of overcoming it. Topic: <laughs> Selected bibliography. Original German Psychologie der Weltanschauungen. Nikolaus Cousinus translations. Topic. References Topic. Further reading Azermendi, Jocks. Bakirin Inguruko Diskurtsoren Jasingaitza. About Die Schuldfrage Jaspers, 1946 in Barkamina, Kondina, Tortura, Donostia, Elkar, 2012 ISBN 978-84-9027-007-3. Engels, Huab. 2009. Emil Krapelin's Traumsprache, or Klaren und Verstehen. In Dietrich von Engelhardt und Horst Jürgen Jarig, ed. Karl Jaspers im Schnittpunkt von Zeitgeschichte, Psychopathologie, Literature und Film. p. 331-43. ISBN 978-3-86809-018-5 Heidelberg, Mats Verlag. Myron, Ronnie, Karl Jaspers, From Selfhood to Being. Amsterdam, New York, New York, Rodopi, 2012 Xavier Tilliot, Carl Jaspers, Abier, Call. Theology, 1960 Topic. External links Publications by and about Carl Jaspers in the catalog Helveticat of the Swiss National Library Existential Primer, Carl Jaspers Bibliographia di Carl Jaspers ed. by Claudio Furillo in Dialegisthi Current scholarly research on Jaspers in English is organized by the Carl Jaspers Society of North America and published in existence. Translation into English of Jaspers 1958 Peace Prize Acceptance Speech Truth, Freedom, and Peace. The Philosophy of Carl Jaspers edited by Paul Arthur Schilp 1957 Newspaper clippings about Karl Jaspers in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.